And you have heard from surrogates on behalf of the presidential candidates. That's what this is all about. And I'm here today to talk about John McCain. But first, let me say how fortunate we are as Republicans to have such an outstanding field of candidates running for president of the United States. They have done us proud. This election is pivotal. We're electing a new president of the United States, and we want to make sure it is a Republican president of the United States. Now, we regrettably all well know that in the last election, we lost the majority in both the U.S. House of Representatives and the United States Senate. And we're going to work mightily to rectify that. But in the meantime, we cannot afford to lose the presidency of the United States. When I look back at my tenure in the U.S. House of Representatives, my first two years and my last two years, 79 and 80 and 93 and 94, were bookended by one party control. Democratic Congress and a Democratic presidency. And what did we have? We had double digit prime interest rates of 20%. And we had tax increase upon tax increase. And I don't know about you, but I think you would agree with me when I say we do not want to go back to the future. And so the real question that we as Republicans have to answer in this critical election where there are historic challenges facing our country. First, who is the most qualified to be the next president of the United States and commander-in-chief from day one that that person sets foot in the <coughs> Oval Office? And two, who can win? Who can win? And I happen to believe that that person is John McCain. Now, I have known John for more than 25 years, and in fact, Jock and John were elected at the same time to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1982. And Jock and I are supporting him because we have seen, up close, firsthand, his incredible strengths, his strength and depth of leadership and character, ideals that are so essential to the presidency, ideals that John McCain will bring to the presidency. We have witnessed a transformational figure in the landscape of politics. He sets a standard in public service. I call it the McCain standard, the standard of courage and conscience and character. And yes, I might add candor. And don't we need more candor in politics today? I happen to believe that that's why John McCain won victories in politically diverse states from New Hampshire, our neighbor, to South Carolina, to Florida. Because he speaks the language of authenticity that resonates across the spectrum, that will unite our party, and that will unite our country. John McCain has the opportunity to appeal to the disaffected. Right now, people want to change in the political process because of the partisanship that here in this democratically controlled Congress now is receiving an abysmal rating of 23%. So John McCain has the opportunity to appeal to the disaffected, those who are disenchanted with that, as they should be. He has a chance to appeal to independence. Maine is a microcosm of America. Republicans and Democrats, for that matter, in this state cannot win without independence. And the same is true across America. When I was speaking at Portsmouth rally for John recently, somebody came up to me afterwards and said, I'm an independent, some of my friends here are independents. And what you said about uniting America is so important to us because you know what he's about. Because you work with him. You're within the inside in the Senate. You work with him, you know him. That means a lot to us, we're going to vote for him. The fact of the matter is, John has the ability to appeal because of his straight talk and straight forward approach that will give people the hope and the 
belief that he will restore trust and confidence in our government. And I think that that is critically essential in today's political environment. We need to unite our party and all parts of our party, and we need independence, and John can bring that together. And above all, we need courage in Washington. Courage. And John McCain has displayed nothing but courage throughout his entire life. In this world of perpetual political change, people want someone who doesn't travel in that orbit. John McCain doesn't travel in that orbit. He tells it like it is. In fact, when I first heard that phrase was when I attended my very first Republican State Convention here in Maine in 1970. And Senator Margaret Chase Smith got up and she said, I tell it like it is. And the convention roared. Because that's an essential quality that people want in their leaders. Certainly, it's what they want in the next president of the United States. John tells it like it is every day in the United States Senate. I can assure you of that. 